Castro said, This revolution belongs to the people, and the people are in command. When they don't want us, we'll leave. But they never left, and the mass executions began. Fifty-eight years later, they haven't left. Thousands executed, thousands in jails, thousands disappeared, and over two million in exile. In 1957, Castro said, I am not a communist, and neither is a revolutionary movement. However, in 1961, he said, I am a Marxist-Leninist, and shall be one until the end of my life. Clear, but we are not coming. Very clear. In 1959, Castro accused all prior governments of lying, but he was in fact the biggest liar of all when he said, When has anybody heard me lying to the people? I am not interested in power nor assuming any position at any time. After the Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961, he declared, I am a Marxist-Leninist and will always be. Military garrisons will be converted into schools. But he lied again. It was a propaganda ploit. Later, they were rehabilitated as military garrisons and the vast public and private school system began the communist indoctrination and military training of children. To escape the ongoing communist indoctrination between 1960 and 62, concerned Cuban parents began sending their children abroad to the United States. The clandestine railroad, which came to be known as Operation Peter Pan, transported 14,048 children. Castro's 1959 promise of elections, equality, and freedom deteriorated quickly after the 1962 missile crisis. Citizens of Cuba faced the development of a totalitarian government in control of all facets of their lives without the means to defend themselves because private arms confiscation began under Castro's orders in 1959. Rather than establishing freedom, a system of re-education was created to instill an undeclared political correctness. Citizens were forced into a double standard of behavior, one at home and one that displayed government support in public. Everyone was subject to undercover surveillance, creating universal suspicion and mistrust, even between family members. The family unit was being dismantled. Children were sent to study far from their homes and families, subjected to military discipline. To further militarize Cuba, the mandatory military service for 16 to 27 year olds was enacted on November 26, 1963 for a period of three years, but was not applied until April 1964. In 1966, Castro made an example of milk production for children, promising a plentiful supply would be produced and that every child would have 33 ounces of milk each day. Instead, he rationed milk, limiting distribution only to children under age 7 in the amount of 2 pounds of powdered milk every 10 days. At the end of 1968, Castro promised a sugar harvest of 10 million tons per year by 1970. He canceled all holidays for an all-out effort to plant and cut sugar cane. People were removed from their jobs and sent to work in the fields. The effort was a complete failure, leaving the economy and farmlands in ruin. Rather than Castro's promised equality, 
he installed a tourist apartheid in which average citizens were forbidden to use stores, restaurants, and hotels created just for tourists and were banned from the best beaches. Travel within the island became a matter of government control. Castro promised free education, but what he delivered is seriously limited. The content of the education is political indoctrination to form generations of followers, minimizing individual free thinking. Education is segregated, the average students having minimal facilities and supplies, while students of the ruling elite and foreigner schools are modern, fully equipped, and have the best teachers. The access to education is conditioned to the parents' loyalty to Castro's revolution. The average student does years of compulsory work and effect paying for their education. The result has been a level of education not nearly as high as heralded. The only statistics available are those provided by the government and they are manipulated to fit the communist system's goals. This archive film from the early 1950s shows the free public education without political indoctrination and open to everyone in Cuba in modern and clean facilities throughout the country. <laughs> The promised free health care for everyone is also a carefully established myth. Quality health care is reserved for the ruling elite and foreigners who pay for their own care with U.S. dollars. For average Cubans, there are no antibiotics, very few medicines of any kind. Their main source of medicines is relatives abroad. Emergency transportation is not available. Bed sheets, food, and bedside care are not provided. Friends and relatives must fill in the gaps. State of the art prior to the revolution. This former hospital in Havana has been allowed to deteriorate since it is used only for ordinary Cuban citizens. News agencies in Havana cooperate to keep this two-tiered system hidden from visitors and the world. This is the real health care system for the vast majority of Cubans. Before Castro, poor citizens had free, high-quality health care, as seen in this vintage film from the early 1950s, showing the clean, state-of-the-art facilities typical throughout the island. They were open to everyone from birth through old age. For the elderly, health care is little more than awaiting death. Family members can sometimes intervene to enable an elderly patient to survive a hospital stay. Castro's government has gone to great effort to establish, outside of Cuba, a false myth of success of Cuba's health care.